program is still Saturday night, and of course, we have our special guest in the house. She's none other than Taiwo Ajayi Licensed. You're welcome to Saturday night. The pleasure is all mine. Oh, this grip is hard. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm shaking <laughs> a man. Wow, yeah, that's, that's, that's uh, strong. Don't yeah, you, you know are. women are even stronger than men? Don't you believe? Men have bronze, mm -hmm. but women have internal strength. You can translate right through your limbs. Your limbs, yeah. <laughs> I just got one now. <laughs> You're welcome to Saturday Thank you. night. Wow, Thank you. that firm, that grip. I wouldn't even give it to you. I'm younger than you, but I wouldn't <laughs> give that to you. Where yeah. do you get the strength from? It's like when they say when you meet somebody, how you dress is important. If somebody introduces you and you give them a limp fish, sort of slippery fish handshake, it's a little, it says a great deal about you. It means you are indeterminate. You don't know what you're doing. You're a little bit timid hmm. and not quite there. I'm sure I'm in for a good time tonight. <laughs> 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 I'm sure the viewers, uh, they'll learn so much from you. Uh, wow. Yeah. We've heard this name forever. I, I grew up hearing this name. I'm still growing. I'm still hearing the name. And here you are on Saturday night as our guest. What an honor. I am delighted to be here. And look at how you are dressed, like one girlish. You've always had this trademark, this, you know, wearing a hat and all of that. Where did you get that from? Well, it started from my mother. You know, when we were schooling here in Lagos, and you go to school, uh, by 12 noon, as you know, the sun's right up there in the sky, and it can be very, very hot and it could be burning your brains out. So my mother used to give us uh, wide brim hats to wear. So I grew up always covering my, my hair. Uh, and when I got to England, well, it shielded you here from the sun, from the rays of the sun and the beating sun. When I got to England, it made my head warmer. So, and of course it's elegant way of dre uh, dressing. And I would never think of getting dressed without having something, some sort of cover on my hair. That's so I'm uh, very, very old fashioned. Here you are in your 70s and you're still looking dashing. I know. You know? I know. Oh, you know. I'm told. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Someone who is very assured. <laughs> People constantly tell. That's another thing. You've got to have confidence. You want to get anything done in this world, you must believe in yourself. I'm not talking about arrogance. Hmm. I'm not talking about being full of yourself. I'm talking about believing in who you are and knowing yourself. Be confident in what you're doing and confident in what you are. Because if you're not confident, uh, who, who are you going to convince that you want to do something and they'll believe that you can, you can achieve it? So, uh, but apart from that, apart from knowing that touch wood, uh, I'm doing okay, you all tell me about it. <laughs> Everybody I'm tells me. So you used to being told about it. <laughs> Everybody tells me. And that's a good thing. And that I like. And I think we can all learn from that. We must all build each other up. We must all constantly tell one another, if we're doing good, we must tell one another. We must always build the best part of one another. We work with the strength. When I grow up, I want to be like you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Now, that's an, like that's you. an honor. But you're going to be you because you have plenty to, that you have brought to give to the world. It's going to be essentially you because you're unique. Hmm. And the world must get what you have to offer. This is more like being me and stealing a bit from you. <laughs> that's like a plus. <laughs> well, that's like we all learn from life. We learn yeah. from one another, don't we? Yeah, that's yes, true. That's we all, true. We all it's try to emulate other people. That's so true. And still remain ourselves. That's so true. Yeah, that's thank so you true. very much. That's, that's so the true. biggest compliment I've got the, oh, today. I'm so happy I'm the one passing it on. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> now, a lot of people are watching right now. And yes, they know you on stage. And I'm sure they've seen you hundreds of times, but a lot of people really don't know much about you. They're very privileged, know a bit about you, but it's an opportunity to bond with your fans, yeah. bond with millions of 
viewers who are tuned on right now as we speak. Yeah. Now, yes, we know your name as Tayo Ajayi Lysen. Can you tell us a bit about yourself? Hmm. I'm an actor. I'm an educationist. I'm a broadcaster. I'm a journalist. For instance, I write a weekly column on uh, Saturday Independent every week. And I've been doing that now, oh, over two years. Every week. Just talk about what's happening. Not necessarily to me. I talk mostly about the mind. What we do with the mind. How we should control our thoughts. And how what we think, generally think a lot of, we tend to attract to us. And how therefore it's important to be careful what we use our minds to think. So I, th I talk about things like that and how it relates to my everyday life. So you're a journalist, yeah. you're an actor. Yeah, I'm an educationist. Educationist. Yeah. I have a school. You have a school. I, I, I run a nursery primary school for years. Hmm. I'm now trying to translate that, uh, and I used to run a uh, drama school. Okay. Now, I'm now going to start running that to t t uh, teach elocution, teach public speaking, hmm. and teach people uh, the power of words, Okay, uh, and have people teach acting. I'm trying to do group training and one on one. People who have to make presentations. You know, we all speak English. Okay. My dear. Yes. And some of us speak English. <laughs> if you see what I mean. So, if you want really people to know, if you want them to know the import of what you're saying, presentation is of the essence. I'm starting to. Taiwa Jaila said Art Academy. Interesting. Yeah, which is going to be. It's well overdue anyway. People are telling me that. This it's is well another overdue. thing. You're talking about me talking to fans. No, we've been going on this journey together for years now. The people who watch me and myself. I hesitate to call them fans. Without them, I am nothing. True. Because they see me and they tell me and they uh, admire me and they inspire me and they are the wings beneath my oh, wings. wings. Truly. That's uh, interesting. So, uh, before I die, I think, let's help train some youngsters. Say for your name and, of course, uh, maybe for those who know you, your accent can't give you away. You have this very unique accent. And the first time I set my eyes on you on TV, I'm like, who is this woman? Where is she from? And all of that. I'm sure a lot of people are also asking these questions as we speak. Now, I'll ask you, where are you from? I'm a Lagosian. Okay. I'm a worry. I'm a Yoruba woman. Okay. Uh, my accent is, is my accent foreign? No, I have educated speech. Hmm. That's all I have. Were you born here? I was born here in Lagos. Okay. And you schooled here? I schooled here. Okay. I left here just before independence. Hmm. And I went to study abroad. Okay. You we, went, okay. Studies took you abroad? Yeah. As we usually did in those days. Okay. And of course, in those days, you study three years, you come back. It's not what we have now, where people are clamoring to go and relocate, as they call it, from here. You went and studied. If three years you are not back, three, four years you're not qualified, your family, uh, the families around are worrying what's happening. Because mm. you were supposed to bring home the golden fleece mm. and come and make contribution to the development of Nigeria. So I went to study. I started out by clearing tables as a waitress. And then I went to night school to study t typing. And then I applied to, to, uh, to, to civil service. Uh, over there? Over there. And I was employed. And they sent me straight to school, training school, typing school, mm. and short-time school. Mm. And from then on, they constantly sent me to uh, training. Well, I applied. They don't just don't send you apply to that. Uh, and every time you passed, you were promoted. And from the typing pool, I became a uh, uh, senior personal secretary working for the director of uh, uh, personnel, director of um, research and development. And the post office tower in London 
I was working in that department when all this was happening. The PC and computer that we take for granted now, it was in that department I was working when we were doing all this hush-hush something about conferencing, which people take for granted nowadays. When I walk around London now and I see the post office tower, I said, we help build that. Oh dear. So I have affinity, I have concrete affinity and uh, pride uh, in walking around London and seeing where I'd worked and what I'd done. Uh, and there, from, from working in research and development, I went to work for the chairman of the post office, and then I went to work for the postmaster general, which is a, uh, the minister of post and telecommunications in England. Working there is when I went somewhere and I, was, I became an actress. Well, that's another story, possibly for another day. We would love to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> we would love to hear it. There are more ears, and I'm sure everybody's yeah. listening. Everybody wants to know, yeah. how did you get into the acting world? As I said, I had a friend who was uh, rehearsing the premiere of uh, Walisho in Kaz, Lion and the Jewel. Okay. It was the first time it was going to be uh, produced abroad. I don't know whether that had been done, even been done here in Nigeria. And he was working there, uh, and I was in the civil service, as I said. And the director, William Gaskell, his name is, I think he's still alive, uh, was walking uh, down the foyer and saw me sat down waiting and came round to me and asked if I was an actor. And I said, I wasn't. And he said, well, would I like, the, there's a production. I said, I knew, I'm waiting for a friend. Would I like to join that? I said, I was a civil servant, but I had my holidays coming. That perhaps I could take my holiday. In those days, every year that I took a holiday, I went to take a course, one course or the other, whether it was modeling or uh, commerce or how to be an administrative secretary. Or, I took one course. I never had a holiday. I was always, during my two months holiday, I, I would go for some course. So I said, well, fine, I had my holidays coming. Perhaps I'll do this. It was an adventure to me. The following week, I was working at the BBC. And there it was, it took off. I was invited in this play and cast in that play and this play and that. And so I said to myself, uh, <laughs> being an accidental actress, that I was, a, I, I was a fraud. And one of these days, these people were going to find me out that I wasn't really truly an actor. And as a civil servant, trained as I was, you don't dabble in something as serious as that. You made sure you were trained for it. Uh, so at that point, I decided I had better get myself equipped equipped for this thing, this new responsibility that had been thrust on me. And it was over, fairly overwhelming. Uh, and I, w I, I felt unsure because am I, was I doing it right? Because I didn't know any, anything about this. So I got myself tutors. So it reaches. Uh, and I went to train at Guildhall School of Music and Drama. I went to City Literary Institute in London. I, uh, I, I went to the dance center, Floral Street, to train as a dancer and movement and everything. Funny, I was training as a ballet dancer and a contemporary jazz dancer. I was training at some ballet class when uh, the director of, of an opera, in Royal, Court, uh, no, Royal Opera House Covent Garden was casting for dancers in Wagner's Tannhäuser hmm. and recruited me and I got bang into, uh, uh, into one, of the, one of the major uh, operas in Western, uh, Western world. Uh, Wagner's uh, Tannhäuser and I danced at the Royal Opera House Covent Garden in Tannhäuser and that's how my career has that's, that's the trajectory my career took just went off like that from not ever having thought that I wanted to be an actor never thought of it, never occurred to me one minute that I wanted to be an actor so there I was at the uh, first of all Court Theatre then uh, uh, Royal Opera House Covent Garden. The Queens usually opened this, you know, and the Royal Family. There I was uh, 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 dancing there. And I worked at Bristol Ovic, 
Uh, <laughs> you have a history there. It has been wonderful. It, ha it has been an incredible journey. I don't believe I went for one audition in my life. What are moments when you, like, okay, I've had enough, I want to just hang my boots and do something else? Were there moments like that in your career as an actress? No. You've never had, like, moments like About that? About acting? Yes. Acting is the most multidimensional, most absorbing profession in the world. It is the biggest university that you can have. It is a very exciting. If you're working from the intellect, it is bound to inspire you, to stimulate you, to want to do more and more and more and learn more and more and grow bigger and bigger and bigger in what you do without no special ambition to, for fame, but the more you know, the less you know you think you know. So you want to know more. So um, as I said, it's a perpetual university, and so you have to keep going on. No, there's never been any time that I thought, oh uh, no, rather I'd leave something else to keep to this, because it gives you an incredibly broad education. It's not about play acting. It's acting is believing. You must make people believe. You must believe. Okay, what is distinct about acting in those days and acting now? What's the difference? What has changed in uh, the acting world? Uh, you mean our world here? Yes, our world here and our world then. What happened is that most of us who were doing acting in those days were trained. We were formally trained. So, uh, and then when it, when it started taking off, this is essentially Nigerian thing. It's our cultural thing. Everybody thinks he or she can act. After all, what does it take? You get on stage, you learn you learn the lines, you cram the lines, and then you just get there. After all, you speak English, you just speak it. Well, acting isn't like that. Well, what we were doing like then. It's not like that. It's the reason why people like Joke Silva are different from the others. Because she's she got formal training. So you know what to, you know how to how to approach characterization. You know about body movement. You know the discipline of body. You know the discipline of the voice. If you want to put a number to the um, plays and movies you are featured in, what uh, number would that be? I could not. No, I don't. I don't keep count. So which one? I can't which even one comes tell to you, mind? I can't even tell you the things. People remind me of the things that are done. I can't even tell you that some of the things that are done. Uh, but the, the ones that I remember, because people always mention that, was some mothers do have them. Because I think it got people's imagination. It's not only that. I thought it was a very, very good episode out of all the episodes. Because also, so interesting and good, outstanding it was, that it won a Montreux Film Festival Award of all the, the, uh, the episodes in, in that series. So it was a very special one. And uh, without being immodest, I think the, the character of that woman in it and the Christmas pudding got people all very worked up. And not only that, the way I did my hair. If you remember in those days, we were all trying to be white, with the exception of Mrs. Lysett. <laughs> 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 because the one thing I wanted to say was being African. In other words, just be me. And it's funny that the producers and the directors were caught in that. Because obviously I stood out as somebody who knew her mind. Uh, so I said, I said to them, if, if you want me to do anything, just give me a wig, but I'm not going to change my hair. Hmm. But why can't I live my hair like that? And I have people who were dressing me and hairdressers trying to learn to do my hair. So they'll do my makeup and everything, but I will then have to uh, teach them to do plait my hair and a plaster. And I wore my hair pla plaited. And they thought it was fantastic. Unique. It was unique. Be yourself. It taught me that. So I, apart from this, some mothers do have them. What other movie would you always remember? Go what on. other series or serial will you always remember? I did General Hospital. 
that's that's a so those are british movies. they're british yeah Oh, you're talking about Nigeria? No, no, go on with the oh, British. Oh, oh, oh. Go with the British. <laughs> Let's start from there because that's where it started from. That's yeah. where you kicked off. Yeah. All right? So and the General British... General Hospital uh, have national health. These are huge productions. Uh, I have Jean Genet's, uh, uh, is a French production, uh, uh, The Maids, uh, which I played. It was so interesting that even though I was African, I played the lead. There are three characters, and they were all French. I played the lead. Uh, if it didn't matter. I still wow them. Uh, you know, the production still wowed the audience. It's wonderful. I remember, yeah, the maids. Uh, um, parcel post. I went back years later. To Royal Court Theatre now in a Ni another Nigerian play by Yemi Ajibade called Parcel Post, and played this termagant woman, and it was incredible. The, the reviews were absolutely hilarious and very very successful. So television, stage, I mixed those, and I was in a, f a film with Sydney Poitier. I'm sure before yeah. your time, the f iconic character, the first black American. African-American to win an Oscar hmm. in a warm December it was. I can't remember everything I've done, but I have done here the mansion. I should, but I must use the mansion here. We started for better, for worse here. Wow. We inaugurated for better. Before it used to be just the village headmaster. Then I came from England just after first act, and we started for better, for worse. And we had the mother of all soaps, Wins Against My Soul. It was the first soap opera in Nigeria. So I, uh, th that's one of the things that are done, uh, that are done here. As I said, it, was the, it is the mother of soap operas in Nigeria. You know, so I've done that. I've done plays, I've worked at uh, Peck Repertory Theatre. Uh, started by professors uh, Ebun and J.P. Clark uh, at uh, J.K. Randall Hall there. It was running then for years. And Dan uh, played in uh, the Year of the Goats. And uh, Aluta Continua by, by a Ghanaian, what's his name now, uh, author. And uh, I don't song of like we know about culture, PB Tech, it's a guy, uh, Ugandan. Uh, I don't quite a number, quite a, a few things here. Uh, and at the moment, I'm in Tinsel playing Yahimba, hmm. you know, the <laughs> witch. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel playing the witch? Uh, no, just a strong older woman. You know, who, who knows what she wants and what she's doing. And the young things, they're wise, and she's just watching them. Which, one, which role would you say was uh, most challenging when you go back in time and look back, flip the pages of all the movies and the, the dramas you have featured in? Which role would you say is most challenging? I'm not trying to dodge it, but uh, every role is challenging for me. Because every role, you don't know how it's going to go. So <laughs> every role I have to start from the scratch. I have to pray that I, got, I get it right. Hmm. Yeah. So I can't say, oh, this one, uh, every role I must, rest, I must wrestle with it. I'm obviously having a good time. And to be honest with so you, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want us to go. But of course, time is always of the essence. So we'll bring the concluding part next week. I know there's so much more to unravel about. Taiwo Ajayi yeah, Licent. And of course, I don't want to deny the audience of that Thank privilege you. to know you. And so we'll uh, be back next week. And so on that note, viewers, we want to say thank you so much for staying tuned to this week's episode of Saturday Night. Taiwo Ajayi Licent will be here next week. That much, I promise you. So until then, be kind to one another. Good night.